You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. Thanks to Concordia University, Wisconsin for supporting The Coffee Hour. Find out more about Concordia University, Wisconsin at cuw.edu. Live Uncommon. We love sharing stories from The Lutheran Witness, and especially The Lutheran Witness Online. Some great series, and we're continuing that series with the Reverend Dr. Adam Kuntz, Assistant Professor of Exegetical Theology at Concordia Theological Seminary, Fort Wayne. He's also co-host of The Word Fitly Spoken, a great podcast. Dr. Kuntz, welcome back to The Coffee Hour. Hey, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. We love your series on the uh, the Lutheran Witness Online, and uh, the, the the latest, I believe, is called With a Whole Heart, uh, talking about giving. What kind of giving does our Lord command of his beloved followers? Yeah, you have to make sense of the story where he is watching lots of people put in a ton of money into the temple box, which was the common place to give especially extravagant gifts in his day. Uh, But he commends a widow who puts in very little, objectively doing basically nothing for the bottom line of the temple or its stuff or its priests or anything that it needs. Uh, And he commends her uh, who gives everything that she has. So there's this mystery at the heart of giving that it turns out not to be about money even when money is given. So what is significant about the condition of the the hearts of those who belong to Jesus? Uh, The heart is the place that Jesus is actually interested in. And so it's the place that when St. Paul talks about giving, especially in 2 Corinthians 8 and 9, he does talk about money and he says you should give and this sort of thing. But he's talking about mainly the heart and that a heart uh, is in Bible terms, not just the stuff that pumps blood all over, you know, your body. Um, and it's not only the way that we also talk about hearts in, in modern day English as, you know, this is where your emotions are. Biblically, the heart is the center of the human being. So everything that you can kind of think of that is basically human is there. So when we're talking about hearts, we're talking about all of me. So how I feel, uh, what I think, how I am, how I act, what I hide, that's all tied up in the heart. So if I'm talking about giving and instead of talking about money or amounts or tithes or what is a tithe, is it on gross income or net income? If I start talking about hearts, I'm actually asking for more. Like, let's be clear. If Jesus is talking about the heart or Paul's talking about the heart, they're actually talking about more than what I report on my, you know, 1040 uh, sometime in the beginning of next year. They're talking about, hey, uh, God actually claims all of you. <laughs> Therefore, he's asking for all. So I'm not giving just 10% of my heart is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the 10% thing comes up so often in, in giving. And the way certainly that I've taught this is 10% is a good kind of baseline figure. And we, we can talk about, you know, lists if you want to. Um But I like the way Franz Pieper talks about this. He wrote about stewardship in the 1920s. And he said, he said, look, let's not limit ourselves to 10% when we're talking about giving. Uh, He said, because we we have so much to be thankful for. And I think that's really the best place to start, that when you're talking about giving, whether it's money or time or any other kind, the place to start with is how much of me has God redeemed? How much of me has God made? How much of me is God leading to eternal life? And when I start thinking out of God's abundance, then a lot of questions become simpler and and not harsh or legalistic or sort of silly. Um, When I start thinking out of God's abundance, I begin to think out of possibility and what God has opened up and what he has given me to to serve and to love, who he has given me to serve and to love. And uh, then a lot of these things, I think, become clearer and I start to feel like 10% is too small. Why is it we're so inclined to go the way of the law or to be legalistic about giving? I think, I think because the law is often simpler than Hmm. abundance. Um, That is if I, if I get up in the pulpit and I tell a congregation, Hey guys, uh, 10%, 10%. Okay. Um, Then uh, that is actually fairly simple. And, when people are starting to learn about giving, which a lot of people have never thought about it, 
So I don't, I don't denigrate 10% as like a baseline for starting to think about my money and my time and, and what I can give. But I don't think that that is really the point. And it's not really that simple because let me say it this way. When I wake up every day, and I, I uh, personally, I have asked God to give me a, a greater sense of these things, and and He has. But when I wake up every day, I want to wake up like somebody that just survived like a life threatening uh, accident or surgery the day before. I want to be happy that I'm breathing, because actually, breathing, not just my income, what whatever is on my W two, breathing is also His gift. So that is a lot more complex and bigger than just saying, hey, 10% of your finance, financial income, uh, that's what we're looking for. Um, what he's actually looking for is all of me because all of me is his gift to begin with. Mm -hmm. I think often we fall into that trap, uh, what you said about the law being a, an, an easier thing to kind of wrap our, our human right. brains around. Right. Uh, so so often we fall into that trap of oh I will just give ten percent and then I'm good, uh, right. but stewardship of of us goes so far beyond all of that. Right, and it's also something in which I can grow. Right, so mm -hmm. if I if I start with ten percent of my income um, that I'm giving to my congregation, let's say that's that's fine and that's that's great, um, but I don't want to stop there. Uh, I could be doing that for 20 years, and if that's all I'm doing, then I'm not growing in this gift of stewarding that God has actually given me. I want to think about my time. I want to think about my emotions. Am I stewarding the emotions that God gives me, or am I, am I kind of locking into um, the things that are most familiar or easiest, and that's actually not helping my neighbor if I lock into this or that emotion when I go to work or something, or when I when this, this family situation comes up. So when we're talking about stewardship and giving, um, we're talking about something that is going to end up encompassing all of my life. And I want to have a big enough idea of God's gifts so that I can have a big enough idea of all the opportunities for stewardship that he's giving me. But you don't understand my situation. <laughs> it just, I don't... <laughs> Dot, dot, dot. What, yeah. what, place, what place do excuses have in yeah. our vocations? <laughs> okay. So, I mean, I think excuses, you'll notice that people make excuses uh, for things that they probably know they should do, even when they're not Christian. So that's something to think about if, you, if you're listening to this and you are a Christian. Why am I doing that, especially when people are talking about, you know, the gospel? Why, why do I want to begin to make excuses? And I, I think that the reason that excuses come up and um, when Paul's talking about this in second Corinthians, he says, look, like, yeah, you can, you can do what he calls, you can sow sparingly. So you can have a view of life, even of life in Christ, which is kind of poor and mean and cheap. Okay. Go for it. The problem is when you begin to think about life that way and you, you, you go into things sparingly. You even go into uh, giving for the sake of the gospel sparingly. Don't be surprised when having sown sparingly, you reap sparingly. What is cool, so cool about what Jesus is doing is that he doesn't live his own life that way. And so the life that he baptizes us into is not that way. It's not poor or mean or cheap. Right. So Jesus isn't like, OK, please prick my finger and I will give one drop of blood for the sake of the world. Instead, he's crucified for the sake of the world. Instead, he gives his whole body, his whole life. He gives up his spirit for the life of the whole world. And so his understanding of how to live a blessed life, um, a beautiful life in God's image is rich and abundant and merciful. And so the life that he gives us whether I'm thinking about my money or my time or how I handle my family or anything is also going to be, if it's in Jesus, not a life of excuses or what's the minimum I can put into this, but it's also going to be rich and abundant and merciful. You know, so it's, it's going to be a life that's like what he gives us when he talks about, when he talks about his own giving, right? He says in Luke's gospel, I'm going to give you uh, more than you need and it's going to be 
it, you're going to have a basket. I'm going to put into it and you're going to have to shake it together to get more in because I'm going to keep pouring. And then uh, I'm going to, you're going to have to press it down because I have so much and it's going to be way more than you need, right? Like when he feeds the 5,000 and then they have tons of stuff left over. That's how he is. So that's how he wants us to be. That's what he's looking to do for us and in us as we live our lives in him. So how do we make that attitude adjustment? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a it's a hard thing. Yeah, it is. It is totally. I think it's I think it's it's something that can only happen gradually because we are so weak. Um, if I'm very strong in Christ, uh, like Paul is when he writes Second Corinthians, he's listing off. You know, I've done all the, I've gone through all this crazy stuff for the sake of the churches, right? Um, that is that has become a joy to him. I think weakness will want to make excuses. Weakness will want to shirk. Weakness will be worried about what if I give too much to Jesus and to his church? Strength will not have to ask those questions. So I think the way to become stronger is to become more firmly rooted in the gospel, right? It's not for me to sit here and say to you or to anybody that's listening, hey, um, start with 10%, then go to 11%, then go to 12%. That might work for you. But what I know is going to work, what I know is actually going to kind of refresh us and renew us is to know and believe that everything that I have actually belongs to Jesus and my whole life is with him and in him. I don't actually have anything else worthwhile. So why don't I just give it for him and in him? Because I don't have any life apart from him. Um, I have died with him and I live in him. Uh, the life I live, I live by faith in the son of God. sacrificial giving, uh, giving with a whole heart, uh, great topic in the, uh, the current, um, it, I started to say issue, but it's online. So it's not an issue. Um, the, the, in the it's theory, evergreen. It's evergreen from, content. From, from Dr. Coons. Um, any hints on, on what might be coming next in your next post? Yeah. What's coming next is kind of a holistic view of, I think where we are going, um, uh, trying to sum up the series and, uh, make clear that uh, although we have had so many challenges, certainly this year, and we can look forward and see so many challenges, uh, the focus is always going to be on Jesus and his gifts. Uh, it was always supposed to be, uh, and it may be a good thing that he's taking away some of our comfort and some of our planning so that in the future we can come to rely more and more and more on him, because that's always been what's real and what's true, is that everything that we have is in him. And we depend on him completely, uh, whether for money or anything else. And so I think that's going to be fantastic uh, in the future to live that more and more. And that's what I'm that's what I'm doing as the series draws to a close. And you can check out the series at witness.lcms.org, the Lutheran Witness Online. Our guest today, the Reverend Dr. Adam Kuntz, Assistant Professor of Exegetical Theology at, Con at Concordia Theological Seminary, Fort Wayne. Dr. Kuntz, thanks so much for being our guest on the Coffee Hour. It's been my pleasure. Thank you. I'm Eddie Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. <laughs>